Yo guys, hi again, it's Kian from Screen Talk here and we're going to do something different today. This year, I've kind of got like a little kind of mini series I'm doing. So it's basically called Kits Chronicles. So the whole point of it is basically to just watch me basically watch different films each month. So basically each month, for example, like this month, January, I'm going to pick basically kind of like a non- blockbuster film so basically a film that not everyone is gonna watch so like your kind of superhero films your fast and furious all that kind of stuff so i'm just gonna pick kind of like a niche film basically that majority of people may not have heard of or may not have watched and i'm basically just gonna review it so it does basically be like my normal reviews but it will just kind of be more niche films so films that you might not have heard of basically like a rating system so it's called the case girl yeah it's not innovative or anything but it's the best i could come up with so deal with it anyway so there's basically kind of like five um what's it called ranking systems of how i'm basically going to rate each film that i watch so the first one is knockout so that basically means near perfect i felt that the film was basically there was next to no flaws so pretty self-explanatory second is classy which basically means it was good i mean it wasn't life-changing but it was a good solid film Third one is cool with a K, so just kind of, you know, I don't want to say mid, but it's like, it's it's calm. As in, if it came on or if someone took me to watch it, I would happily go and watch it. I wouldn't have any objections, basically. Fourth one is klutzy, so it basically means underwhelming that there was some good aspects that were cooking there, but it wasn't, it wasn't fully, you know, marinated. It wasn't, it wasn't there. So, you know, underwhelming. And the last one is five, which just means like killjoy. I don't want to call it like crap or rubbish. I just feels a bit reductive in a sense. But yeah, Killjoy just basically means I just didn't enjoy watching it. So near unwatchable, basically. And yeah, so that's basically the rating system for it. But yeah, I'm going to get into the re review now. So the review was basically The Pale Blue Eyes on Netflix. It's out now starring Christian Bell. And I think the co-star is Thomas Mellon. Apologies if I'm wrong. I've had his name in my head trying to remember it, but I think it's Thomas Mellon. Well, yeah, so the whole kind of gist of it is basically kind of like a murder mystery set in like the 1800s, I think 1850s. And Thomas Mellon's character basically plays a young Edgar Allan Poe, which for you guys that did English, I'm sure you've kind of read some of his poems. He was a very famous poet. So this kind of film was basically him at the beginning. So Christian Bell basically plays like the lead detective and they have to kind of find out what basically happened leading up to the murder, who was involved, blah, blah, blah. So, I guess for me, like a non-spoiler review, or from my kind of like aspect, kind of viewing point, that's the phrase I'm looking for. I think the first two acts were done like relatively well. I mean, visually it was fine. There was nothing kind of stand out that kind of took me out of it. They kind of progressed the story quite well in the first act and the second act. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I think the acting was really well. I think the second lead, Thomas Mellon, I hope that's his name, I really do. Um, Thomas Mellon, he was probably the standout from an acting perspective. I think he did a very, very good job playing like a young Edgar Allan Poe. Christian Bell was great as usual. I don't want to say he was kind of outshone. Okay, maybe it was outshone, but he wasn't bad, basically. Because, I mean, with Christian Bell, you know what you're going to get. So, I wasn't expecting anything, like, drastically kind of, like, pull from him. But, yeah, um, Gillian Anderson was in there. She's from, well, for more recently, for those who've watched Sex Education, but for, I guess, the older heads, I think X-Files back in, like, the 90s, she was kind of the co-lead on that. She was in there. So, a few little recognisable faces in there. So, I think the first few acts were really well, but for me, where it kind of dips or kind of fell apart was the third what's it called like the third act so it just feels a bit undercooked they had a lot of threads but i think they tied some better than others so maybe that's why it felt a bit kind of unfinished in a sense i might be wrong but that's just the way i kind of saw it so just a bit unfinished a bit klutzy to be to be um a bit concise themes and everything were they were clear it wasn't kind of difficult to understand but i just feel they kind of put a bit too much in the pot and they just didn't kind of cook it out evenly basically it was a bit half baked that's that's the phrase i'm looking for so so yes i think that's all i really have to say without actually kind of spoiling it so 
that film was The Pale Blue Eye, directed by Scott Cooper, I believe. It's on Netflix now, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it, check it out, and see what you think of it. So that's the end of the review. Um, so for those who haven't seen The Pale Blue Eye, go and watch it on Netflix, it's out now. Then you can come back to this video, rewatch it again if you want, and then just leave a comment in the comment section saying whether you agree, whether you're not. And yeah. So that's it. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, follow us on all our socials, especially our Twitter, because the link for all our socials is on there. It'll probably be in this description as well. And yeah, keep screen talking.